Lansing is a writer and politician from Portland, Oregon. Lansing pioneered performance auditing in Portland and Multnomah County. She served in Multnomah County Auditor from 75 to 82 and the Portland Auditor from 83 to 86. She has authored several books including Portland, People, Politics and Power and co-authored Multnomah, The Tumultuous Story of Oregon's Most Populous County. Uh, Jewel was the first to um, put in performance auditing for the city of, uh, or for the county of Oregon, uh, city of Portland. Uh, she was one of the first uh, women elected ever to the Portland County Community, Portland County Government Office. Uh, Jewel has retired from public office in 1986 and now she spends her time researching and writing about history. Uh, one of Jewel's motivations for running for office came from her father's failed attempt to run at running for the local commissioner position and she, when she was 10 years old. Her own political career has been both successes and failures, but in the end, she vindicated her dad while also blazing new trails for women. And welcome to the League of Women Voters and Jewel Lansing. Hi, good afternoon. I'm going to have to beg your tolerance here. Uh, my right hand uh, that I usually do everything with is virtually out of commission, so it's going to be all with this. So in, if I do any jumping around, do I, you'll understand part of the reason for that. Uh, I resisted using the word history for the title of this program because I'm not going to be doing a history of either. There's too many things that are involved. This is kind of a potpourri of uh, images that I caught in both. Uh, it, it includes both books. Uh, are, are you able to hear now? Okay, okay. Um, Portland actually was founded quite a while, like three or four years, before Multnomah County was created. And Multnomah County was created three more years before the state of Oregon became a officially adopted uh, by Congress as, uh, as a state. So Portland's been around a long time and has a lot more leeway in what it can do than what the county does. For the county uh, is an arm of the state and basically carries out uh, state legislative dictates. When Multnomah County was founded, You see on the top, uh, well, maybe you don't. Oh, there's my mouse. Uh, they, they took parts of Washington County, and see it, it ends, the county line ends up in the middle of Soviet Island at almost uh, uh, zero degrees is above sea level, and goes all the way over here to Larch Mountain, which is over 4,000 feet. So it's a great variety. And in taking Washington County and Clackamas County, we took away their riverfront. So Multnomah has 50 uh, miles of riverfront, and those two counties have none. I'm, I'm sure that they, uh, they would like to have some of it back. Uh, however, Multnomah County has been the smallest in size since the time it was created and it remains so today and of course by far the largest in population. This is the broadside of the, what they call a broadside of the very first uh, charter for the city. This is on newsprint and it was handed out to the citizenry so they could, the men, so that they could uh, uh, read that before they got a chance to vote on their new officials. And this is the only way that uh, I was able to find the history of this. This is actually the original bill it created, and you'll notice that here in places that it refers to it as a, as a town, and they, they crossed that out and made it a city. And here is a, uh, the petition that asks the legislature to do away with that charter. They didn't like it. Uh, there was a lot of dissatisfaction and the, the mayor was all a volunteer job. It was kind of a, uh, like a fraternity that was uh, 
running around. There uh, a lot of uh, uh, drinking, a lot of uh, hardcore kind of homestead sort of uh, atmosphere. Now, when Vera Katz was mayor, she, which hasn't been that long ago, she's way down here in the far corner, uh, she, one of her projects was to find photographs of all the people who had ever been mayors, and there were 44 of them. When they got through, there were two blank spaces because they couldn't find, uh, uh, they couldn't find photographs for two of them. And if I can get my crazy want now, stay, hold on here. Uh, let's see. There, is that show it? Uh, the arrow uh, on a, that one. They had somebody on there named Aaron Waite who never really was a mayor. And I found that uh, they had been extended. He was extended invitation to be a mayor, but he had not accepted. So I had to talk uh, Sam Adams into taking that, uh, that one down. And if you're ever in City Hall, if you haven't seen this, it's a fun piece of history to go in the mayor's office, and it's right at the entrance uh, there. This photograph was the very first one, and it's in practically every uh, story, history there is of, of Portland. Uh, and here the, the names of the people are, are known, and uh, it was typical scene from that time. As you can see, Portland's waterfront has always been its main feature. This, of course, is why they call it Stump Town. That was close in downtown. A.M. Starr was a mayor for one year, a volunteer job. At the same time, he was a sheriff at Multnomah County. And, and he was a sheriff for four years, two two two-year terms. Very handsome young man. He looks a, a lot like Abraham Lincoln. And he had his finger in virtually everything. He and his brothers, they brought some money from the coal, uh, their uh, work in the gold rush in California. And they parlayed that into, they had a stove and tin uh, ship. They had a distillery. I'm thinking maybe the reason that he was, was going to be the sheriff was convinced people that the distillery wasn't <laughs> Uh, doing something wrong. Uh, he and, and uh, his brothers founded uh, what became First National and now Wells Fargo Bank. He was a rich man and he retired to California taking with him all his money. Is probably why we don't hear more of him uh, <laughs> that we do of others. And you can see here that this uh, uh, very important part, it's, I don't know if you can see it well, that, where the little arrow is pinting. Uh, it's a sod, big uh, pile of sawdust. Can you see that? Well, maybe, maybe not, huh? Well, we got some. This is what, uh, what it looked like down on the wharf when, after the most devastating fire that the city ever experienced. And it was uh, thought that it was uh, uh, a fire that was planted and the, the main target was a Chinese laundry which actually didn't did not burn down but it covered like 22 acres 22 blocks now these are the south part and now where Portland State is and these are the the, the, the blocks uh, down after all the lumber was taken out Now steamships started coming into the harbor. And this is a, uh, another view where the trees have started. Uh, uh, and two, see, I think one of, one of them, I think it's this one, is the, uh, the Corbett estate and where Mrs. Corbett kept a cow in the yard for years and years. And then back, the other mansion back here was uh, the Failing Mansion, I believe. Uh, Mayor David Thompson donated this uh, this fountain that has a place for uh, for dogs and horses and humans to all consume water from the same 
fountain. It's still there, that the fountain is still there in the middle of Main Street when you drive downtown. It's not very far from City Hall. This is a painting that you can see down at Jake's uh, famous crawfish, and it, it's a painting of what he calls Village Folly. And he was a big lumberman who uh, was attempting to corral all the railroads in, uh, in the West and ended up uh, going broke. And this eyesore was there for six years and the weeds grew up and things. That's what is now Pioneer Square. Kind of hard to, hard, it's had an interesting history. Here it was, that same block as the Portland Hotel which for 60 years really was the, the nucleus of social life in the, in the city of Portland until it was torn down in 1951 and an ugly Myron Frank garage was put in there. Any of you remember that? It was ugly and fortunately that, uh, that had, a, had a life that expired. This is the design that, in fact, this uh, is, is the design for a future city hall uh, that they had a design contest and this is the one they chose. But before they could get it built, uh, the, they ran out of money and, and the legislature nixed that. They had to start over from scratch. And this is the worst uh, flood downtown, down at 3rd and Washington. You see there's a little sign there that says Lipman's. Uh, and this is the same, uh, same flood. And somebody caught a 15 pound salmon downtown on the boat. <laughs> and this is a trolley that used to go up the hill not far from uh, Goose Hollow. And back here, I'm not having much success. Can you actually see that little arrow? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's that. Uh, people thought that that was what they called Piggott's Castle, but it turns out it was not. It's actually what this was a private, uh, private dwelling, and it's still there. And I put the address in the book if anybody wants to go find it. But it's it's kind of tricky finding it, but it's a very uh, charming little spot. The story on this one is that Mayor uh, William Sargent Land, Ladd was a very popular uh, uh, official and uh, home, um, he did a lot of uh, buying real estate and donated uh, land for, or rooms for the library. What happened was some grave diggers dug up his, his body and, uh, and stole it. And they, they, they were caught uh, a couple of weeks later, and their intent was to call for some ransom. And what, so what the family decided to do was to cement that grave in so that could never happen again. <coughs> and that, of course, that grave is at uh, uh, Riverside, Riverview. Help me out here. Riverview? Riverview? <laughs> Doesn't sound quite right. So. Uh, here's another picture of a waterfront. This was in the year 1900. You notice the woman uh, is carrying an umbrella and so is the man. That hasn't changed much since then. And this is the opening day of the 190, uh, the, the centennial, which probably was the biggest event of anything in this whole area uh, ever. And it's hard to believe when you drive out northwest Portland now and going out toward uh, Astoria that that Giles Lake area that's now manufacturing or industrial kind of places was uh, was once this charming charming uh, fairgrounds and this is the same fairgrounds at night and this is a wonderful uh, uh, did any of you ever see this uh, log cabin raise your hand not many. It was a wonderful treat. That's the most magnificent building I think I've ever seen. And it burned down. Fortunately, the reason I finally saw it was because my mother came to town as a visitor and wanted to see all the sites. And I just had never 
uh, gotten there myself, but these, this is the inside. See this huge, huge size of those uh, logs? It's just incredible. This uh, is the ferry uh, on southeast uh, Stark, where uh, at the time of the centennial, you see how busy it was and how many people waiting their turn to be able to get back and forth across the Willamette. This was thought to be the first Rose Festival about the, a couple years later, and this was Rose City. Uh, I don't know if you can see those. There, it says Rose City. And the very first county fair was held out here in Gresham, and this isn't a very good photo, but it's the best uh, anyone we found anywhere. So, and that was the fair was very successful out here in Gresham for years and years and years, until people started uh, getting away from farming and agriculture. And incidentally, now 98 percent of the people who live in Multnomah County live in an incorporated area. So even, even though we've got all that uh, open land, uh, it's really federal forest, it's still very concentrated in population. And this is how they, uh, well first, the very first uh, uh, fire wagons were pulled by the firemen themselves. And here is a big jump ahead into the, this, uh, fire station is still up. It's just north of the Chinese Garden downtown. It's really very charming looking a little place and it's on the historical uh, historical records now. And of course everybody knows what this is, right? <laughs> We've seen so many pictures of Abigail Scott Dunaway who was the first, actually this says in 1912, so uh, if it was 1912, uh, that couldn't be. That's, that's an error. Somebody, whoever put that together, better change that. Uh, because it was in 1912 that, uh, uh, that the citizen voted to allow women to vote, and she couldn't have voted in 12 because she wasn't eligible. So this first vote was in, in 1913. At one time, Portland was made up of wards, and this is uh, before they got to uh, the commission form of government, and it's quite different. A ward, ward system uh, really uh, is much more uh, prevalent uh, in places where there's corruption, or corruption occurs, seems to occur more in these kind of places. And this is the, uh, wait, where am I? That's the county library, which I'm sure you've all been down to see the gorgeous library and the model, the extensive remodel that was done in 1996. These are the Benson, they call them the Benson Bubblers, that uh, a millionaire named Simon Benson, he donated these. Uh, fountains because he said that uh, as it was, the people had to go to a tavern to get a drink of water so that this would uh, allow them, they wouldn't have to go to the tavern so much. And this is the county courthouse, which uh, it, it, there was another one before this one, but it, it started way back in 1913. and. That same building is still in use, but you may have read in the paper about how desperately it needs to be redone or torn down and start over or something. But it's, uh, if a, any kind of an earthquake came along, it would be really, uh, really bad. The problem is the county is not in very good financial straits, and I think they'd probably have to have some help from the state before. Uh, if they're going to build another one. They're, they're still looking at it. Uh oh, oh, there it is. Now this sign is, uh, uh, is the mayor is in uh, Mayor Alby and a police captain and a patrolman. And it was the very first stop and go sign that they had in the city of Portland. For a while, the person who was uh, designing the cover on my Portland book 
suggested that this would make a great cover. Well, it is, it's a charming picture, but when I showed it to some of my uh, women friends, they said, no way, that's just, that's, that's just white males. You gotta make that book we <laughs> everybody, not just uh, white men. And this is picnicking on the Columbia River, about uh, very close to this spot that, uh, uh, or where the first uh, interstate highway was built. And the building of the Columbia Gorge Highway was one of the most uh, impressive uh, projects that the county ever did. And the county was in it with, uh, they weren't alone in getting it built, but they, they did the leadership on it. Some of this is, is now on the historic registry. And of course, Multnomah Falls is in Multnomah County. And it is another one of our, our resources. If you, this uh, little, it says uh, temple, what is, oh, Liberty Temple. This was during World War I. And this is right down in, right next to the Portland Hotel and it's right next to Kitty Corner from where, uh, where Pioneer Square later. The flu was uh, uh, worldwide the greatest single epidemic in human history. It's something like 21 million people worldwide. Now this is uh, the, the poster that was uh, posted and it said all schools, churches, lodges, public places of meetings and places of amusement shall be closed. All stores and offices are ordered to, to close at 3.30 or 4. And shortly after this, uh, Portland uh, actually got out pretty well compared to some other people, but it still was, uh, was tragic. This man is named Peter Rexford, and he uh, gets the credit for those yellow lines that we have in the middle of the highway that say, uh, uh, you know, this is where one eastbound and westbound and, and uh, places, I'm not, sh I don't think they had the concept when he first started of having a gap to show that it was okay to pass. It was much simpler than that, but it was a new idea. And we found out uh, after the Friends of the Columbia Guard put a, a little, story in their uh, uh, newsletter about this that actually some other places in the United States came up with the idea of the stripe down the middle of the road at the same time. But you can see how uh, this certainly would be uh, uh, a thought one would have on the windy uh, Columbia Gorge Highway when, uh, when Peter Rexford was part of the motorcycle uh, gang. And Portland had, and Oregon, uh, had their more than, I guess you'd say, share of the Ku Klux Klan. And uh, it's some, uh, there was a claim that uh, George Baer, Mayor George Baker was a member, but it was never proven. And here's George Baker, who for 16 years was the mayor uh, of Portland, and he was quite a ladies' man as you can, you can see in this port with the lady elks that we're visiting. Now this is the waterfront. Uh, and when they're getting ready to, uh, to tear down the docks so that they can build a harbor wall. And the harbor wall that they built was one of the, besides the uh, other, uh, works that had been done, that this was really a huge, huge project, an enormously needed public uh, project. And there, this uh, picture is downtown along, if you walk along, the, this is the, up here at the top, that's the, the water level. And all of this is down there underneath, uh, underground, all these layers of riprap and things, uh, it really is very impressive. 
and it has not, the only time it ever has been breached was this time in 1960 that uh, I did, uh, did get uh, through the, through the, uh, over the wall, if you will. And it was on, at Christmas time. I don't know if you remember that there was a big flood at, at Christmas time. And this is a, the beautiful St. John's Bridge that was built, uh, unlike most things, is built on time and under budget. And it, it remains a beautiful, beautiful bridge. Uh, in, um, it was during the, I've got the wrong date on there, I see. It was during the, uh, the Depression that this whale uh, was uh, was spotted on, on the slough going from uh, from Portland over to Washington, um, the state of Washington, and uh, a man and his son went out there with spears and uh, were able to kill it. And they were uh, everybody was really angry with them, but there wasn't much. They couldn't find a law that said that it was against the law. And then there was the fight with the state as to who got to keep it, but it was on display. And this is the same uh, scaffolding, uh, scaffolding that was, uh, was used to hang people with. And I forgot to say about uh, uh, Mayor Starr right at the early part of this presentation, that he was, in, in addition to all his other claims to fame, he was the first hangman the first one, and uh, he had a scaffolding built there about salmon and the waterfront. And some people built some uh, bleachers so that they could charge people to come sit in those bleachers and watch the hanging. And fortunately, during the night, some other people came and tore them down and threw the, the, the bleachers in the water. But there were actually 13 hangings in Multnomah County before the law was changed so that all uh, hangings would be done in Salem. Now this is a two block long uh, building that this was the opening and it turned out it was one of the worst boondoggles in, in the city of uh, Oregon history. That they built this uh, as a farmer's market, and the farmers were quite happy with the market they already had downtown, and nobody came. It ended up, uh, you'll see some other photographs of it later. And this is City Hall. Uh, uh, instead of a bank, or uh, instead of a Texaco sign and Texaco station, it's, it's now the Wells Fargo Bank. And this, this is City, uh, City Hall. And there's Multnomah County. And this is a Rocky Butte Jail, at which you can agree looks like a medieval fortress. And uh, it was nicknamed the Civ after a while because it had so many escapes from, uh, from the city. <laughs> and during World War II, uh, the uh, the city of Vanport was never incorporated, so it never really was a city, which meant that it was under Multnomah County, uh, and Sheriff Pratt uh, was in charge of, of uh, law enforcement. This is Sheriff, and this is his wife, Bertie, and that's their nephew, Ard uh, Pratt. And, and Bertie was presented with these roses after she christened uh, a tanker called the SS uh, Multnomah. She looks so tickled with herself. Yeah. And this is the drastic uh, Van Vanport flood in shortly after that time. And this is to prove that there never was a time that we weren't worried about our leaves and what to do. But they uh, they brought this machine to town to test it, but it was. The leaves were too soggy, and it didn't work. And Dorothy McCullough Lee was the very first woman to, uh, to be elected to local office of any kind. And she was first elected uh, 
by and chosen by the Portland Council to replace somebody that uh, I can't remember where they died or why, but the, someone that was no longer eligible to serve. And then she ran for mayor, and she got a huge, huge uh, uh, majority, and but only lasted one year, one term because instead of going after the underground, she went after a lot of the things that were sort of popular amusements by uh, people like the, uh, the fraternity sort of club that they had pinball machines and things of that. Well, and this guy was a crook. In fact, he was uh, uh, recalled by the citizenry when they found out that most of what he said in his uh, presenting himself as a candidate for sheriff uh, was wrong. And it was an error. He was, and he was recalled. Well, here we are back at that. That's the same two concrete block that started out as that uh, supposed to be a farmer's market. This uh, took up the whole waterfront. You can see the, the cars back here uh, coming along the waterfront in between the, the building and the water. And from this, it makes it look like this building is right on the water side, but it's, uh, there's this street in between. And this is the new harbor wall, which was a great feat, uh, really. Before this, every spring, uh, people would get flooded out in there. Uh, cleaning up afterward was uh, a terrible, terrible job. And this is Mayor uh, Schrunk, who was the other mayor who served for 16 years. And he was the popular Multnomah County Sheriff when he was elected mayor. And there was a big scandal uh, because the, the media, the the two newspapers, the Journal, Journal and Oregonian, uh, sort of uh, had a, a, a contest seeing who could get the most publicity. And there, uh, Terry Shrunk was uh, accused of bribery, uh, but the, the juries who were uh, impound, impounded to, uh, to find out, to judge, uh, said it was not true. And Don Clark, who was uh, later to serve as sheriff and, and county commissioner, he said that people, everybody in the sheriff's office was convinced that this was a, uh, uh, a, a put up job, that he really was innocent. This uh, Peyton Allen murder was the worst, most, most covered uh, crime ever in Oregon, and they never did for sure find out uh, uh, who did this. Even though some people were, were jailed, they were later released. And then very soon thereafter, there was another incident of this whole family that was missing. And uh, recently, the county, county thought that maybe they could uh, use some new techniques like uh, uh, underwater sounding and uh, DNA, but they still haven't figured out. They, they were going to collect uh, Christmas greens out by the Dells somewhere. And their bodies, uh, the two of the girls were found in, in cro floating down the river at ca Cascade Locks. This is what the Multnomah County uh, organization chart looked like before the adoption of home rule, and this was after home rule. And this is a map that shows the different places that, uh, well, it ended up, uh, they considered for uh, putting in I-205, which eventually got on there. Dan Mose was a, uh, a crazy guy uh, that just, he, he was uh, full of uh, things that are controversial. I mean, uh, that they're, uh, he would show up at all these meetings and stay for about 15, 20 minutes just to show that he'd been there. 
and whoever talked to him last before he went in to vote was the one who's most apt to get him on their side. And he, he was popular with the employees because he's the only uh, commissioner ever who actually went out to, to talk to everybody in their job and see how they were doing. But he and Don Clark were, uh, Don of course is the one who went at the ballot box and uh, he was uh, a commissioner and then was the, uh, the county chair. And over on the city side, they had, uh, at the time that this picture was taken, they were meeting down at, uh, uh, what's the name of the uh, uh, seafood place down uh, in, in the, forget the name of it. But that, that was, um, see what year, is that 1959, yeah. It wouldn't be too long before there's another a big change in the makeup of this city council. And Mildred Schwab was probably the most popular commissioner ever, ever to, to serve the city. And uh, she liked to bring her dogs along and, uh, and put them in the back seat, the back of her, her uh, county city car. And then when they had uh, uh, smoking, no smoking day, she would be the poster child, and then she'd lock herself in her room and, and smoke up a storm. It was funny. So this is the change in the city. See the dramatic change between the, the five, six guys we saw in the other one, and here we have uh, Connie McCready and Charles Jordan and Mildred Schwab, Frank Ivancy, and Neil Goldschmidt in front. And this is uh, what was happening to the once they got rid of uh, Harbor, uh, yeah, Harbor Drive. It's a, uh, here's Alice Corbett, who was, Alice was elected uh, Multnomah County Commissioner the same year I was elected County Auditor. So the two, two of us were the first women ever to serve uh, as elected officials in Multnomah County. Oh, the other ones, uh, is Dan Mose on the other side of Alice, and then Don Clark and Mel Gordon and Dennis Buchanan. And this wild scene was the, the 1977 Trailblazers uh, Championship, the NBA championship. When I sent out, did my Portland book, I sent out a questionnaire to a lot of people and I'd say, what do you think were the most important events that have ever happened? Well, this uh, one guy insisted, this is the most important thing that ever happened to the state of Oregon. It was in, <laughs> they won. And this, of course, is uh, Walton, who was the, the, the ringleader, the cheerleader. And this is Don Clark visiting out at Rocky Butte back before. Uh, Don was very shrewd in being able to get the federal government to pay uh, most of the cost of the a new jail downtown in the Justice Center. Earl Blumenauer, who went from being a legislator to be a Multnomah County Commissioner to be a City of Portland Commissioner, and of course then in Congress. The worst strike in Oregon history by local governments was this one in 1980 that lasted five weeks and it was pretty devastating. The main thing the county got out of it was that they after that, it was uh, um, eight-hour days for county employees instead of seven and a half that had been the practice for a long time. Here's Margaret Strawn, who, who was elected, the first woman actually elected to the city government on her own uh, without having been appointed there, and the first uh, Democrat. And, when she was elected, her hair was all down, and here she is. And then when she ran for re-election, she changed her hairdo, and some people said it was because voters didn't. She looked too severe. She didn't look right. Oh, and I had to put this in, that when I went from the county to the city, I did get uh, approval for uh, performance auditing, but against Frank Ivancy's wishes. And he, he wouldn't even look at me. 
see here, there he's sitting over there by himself pouting. <laughs> and uh, when I took a, a copy of this slide back east to an auditor's uh, convention, they were astounded that the, uh, there was any place that uh, would put auditing on the front page of the newspaper. <laughs> And this was my stair, uh, staircase uh, when I was uh, at the city hall. That was moved, and it's now, I think it's the Pettigrew Room uh, in city hall. You can still see it. And this is a justice center, paid, a lot of it paid for by uh, uh, money from uh, I-205 uh, cutting into Rocky Butte, and we're able to get rid of Rocky Butte and get the money for this new, new building. And Penny Harrington, who was the first uh, woman in, in the country to, uh, to be uh, uh, made the head of a police agency, but then Bud Clark fired her. I don't know if, if any of you were around then. It was quite a tempest in a, and, and Bud was always, uh, always into something. This is uh, Portlandia being moved from the waterfront and where it was built up to the Por Portland building. Another one that puts in scale, how it doesn't look quite that big from here. This is one of the, one of the Jack Ullman uh, cartoons about Mildred Schwab and Margaret Strawn arguing with each other. The, this one is not in the book, but in the book is a picture of one with Bud Clark with his foot in the mouth. <laughs> and this was the first uh, all-women uh, commission anywhere in the country. Uh, Pauline Anderson, Carrie Miller, Gretchen Kafori, Polly Casterline, she was the East County uh, uh, District, and Gladys McCoy. And this is the Wapato Jail, the famous Wapato Jail. It was built, completed in 2004, and has still never been used because there's no money to operate it. Uh, when we took a tour this summer uh, out there, they were filming uh, something from the uh, TV show Grimm, and that, that was a, a fun thing for the people on the, on the trip. And of course, this is what the riverfront looks like now, quite different from when that two block uh, building concrete thing. Oh, and this is the Portland, uh, the Willamette getting uh, tagged as being uh, most polluted in the, in the nation. And this, this is still a problem we're working out. And, uh, Big, a big pipe is supposed to take care of that. We hope it will. And here's another one with uh, Jack Oman. This is a county building. They moved, they just ran out of space in the county courthouse. So in uh, year 2000, they moved over uh, to the east side. And this is uh, down the springs down by the river downtown, and uh, the Esplanade on the east side, which I think was one of the other main projects that uh, were undertaken, and Vera Katz get a lot of, gets a lot of credit for her, her work on getting this through. There was a uh, council composed of these five people that had more problems internally than any ever other in the history of uh, uh, of the uh, county, but they they got into being so quarrelsome and uh, were fighting so much internally that they were called. You ever hear the word the mean girls? Yeah. Well, this was was uh, and for a while they thought we're going to have a hard time getting anybody who's willing to run. But uh, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, a man named Ted Wheeler right here in the center. Uh, ran and and successfully uh, turned the public image ar way around the other way. Because this is Deborah Kafori, who's there now, Jeff uh, uh, Kogan, who is now the chair. Ted Wheeler is now the, 
the sec uh, treasurer, uh, Judy Shipwreck and, and Diane McKeel, who is the East County person. And this is the glorious uh, Pioneer Square, which it's amazing that it was able to happen because Mayor Ivan C. and the PDC chairman said, no, it's done, we can't get it. And it was citizens who went out and, and raised the money and got that to happen. So that's it. Now, I'm going to take time. I uh, hope somebody has some questions. Surely somebody's got a question. I refuse to believe that nobody has a question. <laughs> Yeah, in the back. Yeah, that was, no, that was, uh, no, the city of Portland had never gotten close to all women. The closest it ever came was uh, when Mildred Schwab and uh, uh, Connie McCready were on at the same time. Uh, but, so it was Multnomah County that had the all, all women at once. And there, part of the reason that more women have, uh, have run for, uh, for county commission is that they're more able to, uh, to raise the amount of money they need to run campaigns. And they, uh, pe the commissioners in Portland have a lot more power, too, than the county do commissioners do, because the chairman has so much uh, power in, in, uh, in the county. Yeah? How many years did you serve? I was uh, actually 12 years, eight years at the county and four at the city, yeah. Yeah. When when you decided to do performance auditing, mm -hmm. which to me made good sense, mm -hmm. uh, what what was your impetus and what was your reason for doing that? Oh well, I was lucky uh, that when I came into office, the performance auditing uh, I don't want it was not a fad, but it, the movement was just getting started, and I was serving on a, I was a member of the, I was a certified public accountant and a member of their committee that, that looked at auditing. And we had guest speakers came from places where they had, where the General Accounting Office had uh, pioneered and, uh, and was able successfully to put that in, in Multnomah County. And actually was, uh, uh, for many years, was considered to be the mother of performance auditing for Oregon uh, government because uh, nobody else had, had done it. And after it was successful in the county, uh, the citizens really wanted it in the city. So it was with citizen help that, uh, that it did get funded in the city. <laughs> yeah? What do you think about any future consolidation of the city? Oh, you county. know, I, I didn't have time at all to talk about co consolidation, which is why I didn't want to call this a history, because this is just some little scenes from here and there. The, but the, <coughs> the city-county consolidation uh, is a contentious issue throughout the whole 150 years of, that these books covered. There were always people wanting to consolidate, but after eighth time uh, in, uh, let's see, it was about six years ago, seven maybe, that uh, the voters again turned down <coughs> the opportunity to consolidate because, uh, partly because they didn't want to see a strong mayor. They don't, they like to see your power diffuse a little more, I think. But there will always be people wanting to consolidate, so it's going to be interesting to see. The people in East County, uh, Gussie McRoberts, for instance, she was firmly against any kind of city-county consolidation because she said that those of you who didn't live in Portland would be having to share in the cost of the uh, fire and police pension uh, fund, which is uh, a big, a big question. Is somebody giving me a? a I, I look over there. I hear a voice over there, but there isn't one. Well, what can I say? Are you going to wind, wind it up for us? Okay. Okay.
Ooh, that's all I need. Thank you very much, Joe. And uh, I want uh, the audience to know that we have some books back here for sale. And for our viewing audience, uh, you can look on Jules' um, website and find out where some of her books are for sale. And I think it's Powell's, and I, there are several of them downtown. Mm -hmm. But uh, her website will tell you, so just go to that and find out. And uh, thank you again, Jules. And, uh, We'll close for today. Thank okay. you. Thank you.